Hi everyone, Dr. Hall here, and today we're going to go ahead and make a clay model of the scrotum and its contents. So first of all, I've kind of created a bit of a scrotum, so you might want to pause the video and make the skin of your scrotum, right, which is just a skin sac that hangs down from the body. The whole point of the scrotum is to allow the testicles to reside outside of the body because optimal temperature for spermatogenesis or the production of sperm is about 93 degrees Fahrenheit, which is significantly lower than uh, body temperature, right? So we want the testicles, right? So I'm starting my first testicle to be able to be a little bit cooler. So think of the scrotum as a bit of a summer porch or a sleeping porch. It's a cooler place for the testicles to live. Now, sometimes, all right, these are a little bit large for testicles, but they'll do. All right, sometimes you want to be able, if it's cold out, you want to be able to bring the testicles in closer to the body. And if it's very warm, you want to be able to let them hang further away from the body. You want to be able to regulate the temperature. So we actually have a muscle attached to the under surface of the scrotal skin, and that is called the dartos muscle. So I'm just, it's a very thin layer of muscle. Sometimes it's called dartos fascia because it's so thin, it's almost difficult to appreciate that it really is a muscle. So I'm creating my dartos muscle or dartos fascia with lots of holes in it here. So that's gonna be right on the under surface of the scrotal skin. And the way I remember that that's dartos muscle is because when that contracts, it's gonna pull the scrotum up, pull the testicles closer to the body. So I think of it as it's gonna dart them back in. So that's how I remember the dartos muscle. Inside the scrotum, the two spaces where the testicles live are completely separate. There is a wall in between the two sides of the scrotum called the scrotal septum, right? So a septum is a dividing wall. So, you know, if anybody ever had a deviated septum in their nose, that's the dividing wall between the two nares or nostrils, we have a scrotal septum. We also have a structure that anchors the testicles inferiorly to the scrotal skin called the scrotal ligament or more entertainingly, well, I'm gonna use a different color. Mm. Yep, hold on a second. Let me use some more orange for this. More entertainingly, the gubernaculum, which is one of my favorite anatomy words of all time. So there's a little ligament that attaches the inferior pole of the scrotum to, or of the testicle, to the scrotal skin to help keep the testicles anchored down where they belong. So we've got the skin of the scrotum, the dartos muscle, the two testicles, scrotal ligament or gubernaculum, and the scrotal septum. Let's take a closer look at the testicles. So if I open up a testicle and look inside, I am going to see lots of little teeny tiny squiggly tubes. They look like miniature ramen noodles. I don't think I'm going to be able to adequately represent these with clay, but I'm going to try. So they're really microscopic. So if you look at a testicle when you cut it open, it's very hard to appreciate them without some type of a magnifying lens or a um, stereoscope, micro dissecting microscope. So there are these little tiny tubes that are coiled up into little sections called lobules. The tubes are the seminiferous tubules. Each section is a lobule divided by a septa, right? Because septa means wall again. So seminiferous tubules in their lobule divided by a septa from another lobule with its seminiferous tubules. So that's what we would find on the inside of the testicle. On the outer surface of the testicle, there is a tough white outer covering called the tunica albuginea. Tunica just means covering. Albuginea comes from albumin, like white, egg white. That's what it looked like. It looks like a, when they first looked at this, they thought, oh, it looks like a hard boiled egg. And the protein in egg white is albumin, named like albino because it's white. So tunica albuginea is the tough white outer covering of the testicle. 
We also have another tunica that we are going to find surrounding the testicle. So I'm gonna get my saran wrap. This is the tunica vaginalis. And what it actually is, is a piece of the parietal peritoneum that got pulled down into the scrotum with the testes when they descended during fetal development. So the testes in a fetus, when you're in the womb, a little baby, start up in the abdomen. And then late in pregnancy, they get pulled by the gubernaculum down into the scrotum. And when that happens, a little piece of peritoneum comes with them. And so there's a piece that covers the testicle directly, which is the visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis. And then there's a part that comes back around, which is the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis. So just like how we have visceral and parietal peritoneum, we have a visceral and parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis. All right, the next structure I'm gonna show you is the epididymis. So after sperm is produced inside the seminiferous tubules inside the testicle, it's then going to move into a coiled tube that curves around the posterior surface of the testicle. So there's my coiled tubule and it's gonna curve around the testicle like that. This is called the epididymis. So after sperm are produced in the seminiferous tubules, they move into the epididymis for further maturation while they await ejaculation. Now, of course, if they don't get ejaculated, they just get resorbed. You say, better luck next time. But they can live for several days. So the epididymis is this coiled tube that curves around the post, mostly the posterior aspect of the testicles. Sperm move into it and further mature and await ejaculation. If ejaculation is going to occur, let me put my tunica vaginalis in place here. Then the sperm are gonna move out through a tube called the ductus deferens, which is attached to the end of the epididymis down there. So the ductus deferens, also called the vas deferens. Both terms are appropriate and accurate. So ductus deferens, vas deferens, whichever one is your favorite is just perfect. And so these are gonna bring the sperm up out of the scrotum and into the pelvis and then into all those structures we talked about before. So they're gonna go past the seminal vesicles and get secretions from there through the ejaculatory duct that goes through the prostate gland, get secretions from the prostate, enter the prostatic urethra, membranous urethra, and then spongy urethra and out the body. So that's, this is the first part of the vas deferens, the scrotal part of the vas deferens. So in this space, right, that the vas deferens are using to kind of get up into the body, we're also gonna find some other structures. So we're gonna find the testicular artery is going to travel along with the vas deferens. We're also going to find, and so just remember, that's your gonadal artery, right? Camp comes off the abdominal aorta. We're also going to find a testicular nerve, right? Every structure, every organ needs a nerve, so a testicular nerve. And then a really interesting uh, plexus of veins. So these little thin veins that form a plexus, which means a network, it's kind of a webby, uh, appearance to it and these are this is called the pampiniform plexus of veins oops i broke one all right pampiniform plexus also a great word so scrotal ton contents give us some really excellent vocabulary words that make excellent computer passwords right we have gubernaculum down here the scrotal ligament and now we have the pampiniform plexus of veins, which is really fun to say. So that's that webby network of veins. All of these structures that are traveling together are referred to as the spermatic cord. And all of the structures of the spermatic cord are covered by a layer of the other muscle. So I've made a flattened sheet here. You might wanna pause the video and do the same for yourself which is called the cremaster muscle or the cremasteric muscle. 
and it is going to entirely surround all of these structures in the spermatic cord as well as the testicle. All right, so it's going to be all bundled up. like so. Yeah, so I'll leave the other one so that it's dissected away anteriorly so that you can still see all those other structures. This is my spermatic cord, right? All of those structures within the spermatic cord. Okay, so you might say, well, hey, if the dardos muscle is responsible for raising and lowering the scrotum in response to temperature regulation needs, why do we need the cremasteric muscle? And I would say, good question, and I don't entirely know the answer. But what I do know is that the cremasteric muscle is not actually involved in temper temperature regulation, although that's what you'll find out there on the internet. It's actually not correct. What the cremasteric muscle does is it raises the testicles during arousal. So as part of the human sexual response, the testicles do get pulled in closer to the body, I guess to make it easier for the sperm to shoot up through the vas deferens, not really sure why, but the cremasteric muscles will elevate, pull the testicles in toward the body during sexual arousal. It's the dardos muscles out here on the undersurface of the scrotal skin that are responsible for temperature regulation. So now I'm just gonna go through a really quick review of the anatomy. So cremasteric muscle surrounds the entire spermatic cord and the testicle. Inside the spermatic cord, we will find the vas deferens, the tube through which the sperm are going to travel, the pampiniform plexus of veins, this weird network of veins, testicular artery, testicular nerve. Down here with the testicle, we have the tunica vaginalis, which has two layers to it, and we have the epididymis that curves around, and that's the site of sperm maturation and storage. Inside the testicle, ooh, they got squished, but we have lobules divided by septae, and inside each lobule is a coiled seminiferous tubule. The testicle also has a scrotal ligament or gubernaculum anchoring it to the inferior part of the scrotum. We have a scrotal septum, which is dividing the two halves of the scrotum. And then we have the dardos muscle on the undersurface of the scrotal skin. So that's it for scrotal anatomy.